What's up everybody, I'm Derek, this is Rocking eForge, and today I'm getting into part two of Blacksmithing for Beginners, and in this video I'm going to be covering the twist. Now a twist is a great decorative element to add to any piece to give it a little bit of pizzazz or flair that otherwise wouldn't necessarily be there if you left it untwisted. Twisting is a skill that all beginner blacksmiths should learn early on, and I'm going to cover a few in this video to give you the tools in your toolbox to add that decorative element to any piece. Now the first twist I'm going to show you in this video is simply just the basic twist. So let's get rocking. So one of the keys to successful twists is to pre-size whatever you're using to clamp whatever the piece that you're twisting in so that it's ready for you to come and immediately clamp that piece in. I'm currently clamping, I think it's 3 8 inch square stock, so this should be fully wide enough to get that in there, and uh, I will be here right back. The basic twist seems pretty basic, and it is, but you get variations on the basic twist simply by the evenness of the heat and the length of the heat. So if you do a single twist, and I am not using the best tool for this video, unfortunately, but if you do a single, so that's a 180 degree twist. No, it wasn't. I started here, didn't I? All right, so that is a 360 degree twist. You can vary this twist in many different ways, simply by increasing or decreasing the number of full rotations that you do with the wrench. It's very worthwhile noting here that a basic twist requires a square cross section of whatever piece you're working with. That is going to get you the classic sharp edged twists that everyone kind of knows and loves. And all in all, this is very simple to do. Now the basic twist looks very nice, it's very simple, it's very just kind of elegant in its own way, so to speak, and you can tighten up the distance between each edge of the twist by simply locking it in the vise again and continuing that twist further. You can make this twist less tight by simply just putting fewer turns or doing a half turn or a quarter turn or what have you with your wrench. But additionally, the degree of twist that you get here is dictated by the length of the piece, right? So this is one twist over the course of approximately three to four inches. And if I were to have locked the piece in the vise at say this point and had the same heat all the way up to the end, that would be one twist in say eight inches or so, so double that length. And the twist would look far less tight, even though it's the same number of rotations. Now to show you a bit of a different way of doing the basic twist, uh, I've forged a short taper into the end of this bar, and I'm going to twist it here to demonstrate what happens if you forge, or if you try to twist a piece of material with a different, or with a varying cross section. Now as you can tell here, this twist is not even all the way up to the tip of the bar. And this may be absolutely intentional if that's something that you want to go for. So varying the cross section can change the rate of twist that you get. The thinner the material gets, the tighter the twist will be, and the thicker the material gets, the less tight the twist will end up. Now, this highlights that if you have a piece of varying thickness throughout, you are going to get different rates of twist throughout that from the whole length. And if you'd notice, because of all of the twists that I got up here, that twist didn't make it all the way down to the actual jaws of the vise. Again, if this is intentional or if, what you're, if, if it's similar to what you're going for, that works out perfect. If it is not what you intend, having varying thickness in the cross section of your piece can mess up a basic twist, which is why you have to be very careful about how you manage the work that you're doing prior to doing a twist. Now the basic twist tends to be best done either at the beginning of a piece so that you have no variation in the cross section, you're starting with just completely square stock, like I did with this railroad spike knife, or at the very end, once you have finalized the cross section that you intend to twist and have no extra work to do on it. There's pros and cons to both philosophies. So just do what feels right to you and what comes out best for you in practice. All right, so a slight variation I like to do on the basic twist is to simply knock down all of those corners or chamfer 
all of the corners on the square cross section, and then do the twist. Now it's important to get all these edges as even as possible to make this look the best. I personally find this to be a really nice variation of that basic twist because it breaks down all those corners, makes it really smooth, and it makes for a really nice handle on something if you want a twisted handle on say a steak turner or a fire poker or something to that effect. So we're gonna get this back in the fire and twist this and I'll show you the difference between the two. So as you can see, there's a significant difference in the sharpness of the edges of both twists here. That was simply by knocking down the edges on this twist. And then I also put in one whole extra turn on the newest twist to show the kind of difference in tightness that you can get out of twisting the material more than just a single twist. Now's the time where I point out that having an even heat along the length of the twist is vital for getting the kind of uh, perfect distance or spacing between each edge of the twist to the next one all the way up the piece. And if you have any variance in heat for the same cross section all the way through, the hotter portions will twist. And I don't know if there's any this seemed to be like a pretty even heat. But for the sake of illustration, let's suggest that maybe this point here was hotter than the point up more toward the wrench. This point would twist tighter than the point up toward the wrench, which would give you a, a variance between each edge. If you're not trying to obtain that look in a given piece, it's vital to ensure that the heat is even all the way up the length of the portion of the piece that you're twisting. Now, something to be said there is that at the point where you are clamping the piece in the vise and at the point where you are twisting from using whatever wrench you're using, both the wrench and the vise are acting as heat sinks. As such, you're going to suck the heat out closest to the vise and you're actually going to get less of a twist the closer you get to each of those points. So you need to make sure that if you're trying to get a certain length twisted to the, to the same level or to the same degree, you need to step off a little bit from the point where you're clamping and where you're twisting from in order to get that evenness in the precise length that you're trying to get to. Another point to be had here is that while you are twisting, the piece is cooling down, which means it's going to get harder and harder for you to make additional twists or, or more turns because it is actively getting more and more solid as it cools. Additionally, in the case of a varying cross section, the thinner material uh, will actually lose heat faster than the thicker material. The thicker material is going to retain heat a lot longer than the thinner material. So if you have a piece of varying cross section and you want to get a more even twist, you can experiment with letting the piece cool slightly before you, be you begin your twist so that the thicker portion of the material actually retains that heat and twists more than the thinner portion does. And that'll simply have to be up to your experimentation to figure out how well you can get this to work and what works best for you. All right, so now that we've got the basics out of the way with the basic twist, I'm going to move up to the next level of complexity with the second twist that I'm going to teach you, the split twist. Now the split twist gets its name aptly because you simply split the square stock that you're working using a chisel all the way up the length and getting it started is the hardest part, but all the way up the length of the piece. Obviously your goal here should be to keep it in line with the piece as much as possible. Don't worry too much about it wandering because when you twist it, um, that kind of twists out of it, so to speak. All you simply need to do is chisel into every face of the square bar that you're trying to twist, or in this case, a railroad spike, all the way up the length of where you want to get the twist out of, and then simply twist the piece. So I'm going to split this on every face and then meet you back at the vise.
So now is a good, as good a time as any to tell you that you will get the best twist you can if you get this piece, the thicker pieces especially, as hot as you can before locking them in the vise. Uh, additionally, having the right tool would go a long way in making sure that you get an even twist because doing this in the manner that I'm doing it right now uh, is not very efficient. Come on. Not very efficient with your motion uh, simply due to the fact that it's not balanced and a longer handle helps a lot to get the right amount of leverage. That's already cooled. <laughs> That's, I got not even a quarter twist out of it and it's already cooled down too much to twist it with the amount of leverage that I've got there. And next time I will not talk as much so I can focus a little bit more. Uh, but so far, that's the twist. We get another heat on this and uh, try it again. The biggest thing for pieces this big is you gotta kinda use your body heat, or your body weight, rather, oh. <laughs> and hope that you're, the thing that you have your Vice clamped to doesn't uh, also come with it. Now, <laughs> as you can see, it's turned into a bit of banana. And the reason for that is mainly because I don't have a handle on the end and this is a pretty small wrench to be twisting stock this big. And putting so much of my body weight into it to try to just get the twist in forces the piece to bend along with it, unfortunately. So I'm gonna show you how I deal with straightening this because based on how much effort this has taken already, I don't think I'm gonna do more than this twist. But it's looking pretty good already. So I'm gonna take it, throw it back in the fire and uh, I'll show you how I straighten twists that end up bent because this is as good a time for a lesson as any. Now you will frequently find that you your twists don't always come out perfectly straight and the best way to straighten them without ruining the nice crisp edge that you have on it is to take it to a piece of wood and hit it with another piece of wood. Now, there's a lot of people, plenty of people use wooden mallets. And if I had one handy, I would probably use that. But at the same time, I don't like literally burning through wooden mallets because you can see what it's done to this just half an ax handle that I had lying around the first time I needed it. And uh, as such, I don't tend to, I just tend to use whatever chunk of wood's lying around. And this old stump that I have had for quite a while. But as you can see, that's really helped in correcting the banana shape that we had going there. Let's straighten it out pretty, pretty well. And now I can forge in whatever I want to the tip of that as I go. Now, something else you can do with the split twist is to round off or chamfer all the corners like I did with the basic twist and then do the split and twist it and I think that turns out really nice, really phenomenal. It makes for a really nice handle on this short fire poker that I forged here a couple of years ago. It's the next day. I was getting a little too warm yesterday and it is a much cooler day today. So we are moving on to the third and final twist of this video and that is going to be the pineapple twist. Now the pineapple twist should look very familiar to you because the pineapple twist simply starts out as a split twist. Put that a little misaligned there. It is uh, definitely important to try your darndest to get that split down the center of the bar if you want this to be as uniform as possible. but I'm gonna split every side, twist it, and then I'll show you the next step. Now, as I mentioned previously, this is just basically the split twist by itself. And the direction that you take this doesn't matter. 
uh, on the first iteration of this twist. So I'm just gonna take this to the right here. I chose some uh, high carbon steel, apparently. <laughs> this is about as hard to twist as the uh, railroad spike was. Okay, we're gonna go get that hotter. Try it again. All right, so this should be plenty hot this time. So that is a tighter split twist. And again, with the previous section of this video, you can absolutely leave it like this, but we're going to move back to the forge and the anvil for the next portion of the pineapple twist. So the next step in this process is, is to simply bring it back to the anvil and forge it back into a square cross section. We're just forging on the same square that we were originally on, right? This original square cross section. You don't want to knock in all of the corners. You're not taking this to round. You are simply forging this square. And honestly, in the process of doing this, this I also find that this looks really cool. And if you want some sort of square twist that returns to the same kind of cross-sectional area as the original bar, this looks pretty sweet. Once you've got that forged down into the square again, you just go back, lock it in to your anvil or however you are doing this, and you re-chisel that center line uh, back up the handle or whatever you're doing. on every face again, and then twist again. If you're a pro, like me, you get that insanely off center and then keep sticking with it. <laughs> uh, if you want this to look as nice as possible, you want this to be as close to center as possible and as straight as possible and fully connected all the way down. So unfortunately, we're, or maybe fortunately, we're going to get some really interesting size variations on all of the diamonds here. I will try my darndest to get closer to center on all three of the rest of the sides, and then we'll get back to the post vise. All right, and then you just bring it back to the vise and twist it again. And the key to this twist is to twist it the opposite direction that you twisted it the first time. And you can get, you can go maybe a half twist and see how that looks. Brush things off with the brush here. You can go a little further if you want. You're just gonna kind of have to experiment with what looks best to you. And I'm sure the cross section and the amount that it was previously twisted makes a big difference as well. I think I'd like to go a little bit further. So I'm gonna heat that up in the forge, bring it back. I want the square cross section here at the end to be back in line. So I wanna go another probably third of a twist here and then we'll straighten it out and see how it looks. This one got pretty dirty. So I'm gonna give it a nice brushing with the uh, coarse brush. And there you have a rough pineapple twist. Now, as I mentioned previous, this would be a lot more uniform and nice looking if I had gotten the grooves perfectly center lined, both on the first set of grooves on every face when it was still just square stock and on 
the second set of grooves once I was actually getting these diamonds in. However, regardless of the lack of uniformity, I think this looks awesome. And I think it is a great addition to your toolbox when you are looking for a decorative twist to add flair to a piece that you're working on. Alrighty, that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you want to support me and the channel further, please consider becoming an honorary striker on my Patreon. That link is in the description below the video, or please consider becoming a member on my YouTube channel. And as always, keep on rocking.